So I wanted to do a, uh, a review of the Temple of the Vampire, and I think I may have actually done one of these reviews uh, many, 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 many uh, years ago when I first started my channel, but I can't find the video. Sometimes I lose videos here and there. Um, and what I want people to know is uh, I am a, quote, lifetime member of the Temple of the Vampire. I joined the Temple of the Vampire when I purchased the, Vam the Vampire's Bible, or the Vampire Bible, or whatever the heck it's called. And there are two sides of vampirism, the religion of vampirism. And the one side is the day side of vampirism, which is essentially uh, straightforward transhumanism and biohacking. Okay, that's the first side. People that don't know what that is, I'll leave a link to what transhumanism and biohacking are in the description. Then there's the night side of vampirism, which is based on uh, feeding on the life force of others and a lot of things of that, a lot of that stuff. Uh, and the laws of magic and, you know, things of that nature. Now, I don't want to get too into what is covered in the Vampire Bible or the bloodlines, uh, the compilations of bloodlines or life force, which are the two magazines of the Temple of the Vampire. But essentially, the beliefs of the Temple of the Vampire is that there are certain people that are uh, special, and these are vampires. Uh, these are followers of uh, Tiamat. Tiamat is the great dragon of, of um, uh, Assyrian, Babylonian, uh, what is it, Assyrian, Babylonian, and Sumerian mythology. But Tiamat is something more uh, to the vampire, more similar to something like a Kundalini. Now, to me, I see a, a lot of great similarities between Satanism and vampirism. Uh, and it's odd because in the Satanic Bible, Antalave is very consistent in stating what a, what a psychic vampire is and why a psychic vampire is bad. And I will do a whole video on psychic vampirism, not this kind of psychic vampirism, but the kind covered by Anton LaVey in the Satanic Bible. So essentially, psychic vampirism, which is what's promoted by the Temple of the, Vamp the Vampire, is different than sanguinarianism. Now, when I was a teenager and a young adult, in, in uh, American National Socialist circles, there are actually uh, a lot, there's a lot of the vampire aesthetic, a lot of the vampire aesthetic, a lot of the goth aesthetic, and there are a considerable amount of sanguinarians. Uh, you might not know that unless you get romantically involved with them as I have. In the past, now what's a sanguinarian? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a person that drinks human blood. Well, any blood, really. But in the case of um, vampiric sanguinarians, they're, um, they're people that believe, they either believe or do have a real medical need to consume fresh blood. Uh, this is not unheard of, uh, but it's outmoded because there are medications obviously and supplements that can help to replace uh what's lost uh well or not what's lost but what's needed in in the blood um now i've been in a relationship in my early 20s well actually my late teens with a young lady that was a national socialist that was a sanguinarian uh which was actually how i first heard of the temple of the vampire uh, I, I was not a member of the Temple of the Vampire. She was a member of the Temple of the Vampire. Now, the Temple of the Vampire has a strict no sanguinarian policy nowadays. But back in the 80s, when it was formed, and the 90s, and the early, and the 90s when I met the young lady, um, no, there was no hard and fast rules because they wanted to promote this vampiric aesthetic. Okay, this vampiric, uh, this idea of vampirism. Now, the concept of vampirism is the promotion of the fact that you are a predator and you are above the, and to put it in terms of the alt-right, of a sheeple. <laughs> You're above the sheeple because you are a wolf. You're the predator. Um, it's similar to Satanism in many ways in that respect, but it's different in the sense that it has this whole 
uh, paramythological concept of the Anunnaki and how vampires are actually descendants of the Anunnaki living amongst humans. And what's it's very interesting and I think very unique uh, and very powerful. I do believe it's very a very powerful religion for people that are seeking uh, this type of outlook. I don't think it's legit, honestly. Like, I've... I've practiced vampiric ritual. Um, I've spoken with uh, vampires. That's what the, you know, vampires with a capital V. Um, and I think that it's very interesting, very powerful. Uh, do not be confused. It is not a white supremacist type of thing. However, like the Church of Satan, a lot of white supremacists are drawn to this power this power outlook, this idea of power and of being the predator and the wolf. Remember, the wolf aesthetic, similar to um, the werewolf order. Uh, the wolf aesthetic is very powerful in, uh, in European culture, whether it's Slavic or Germanic. Uh, the wolf aesthetic is very a very potent archetype amongst uh, national socialism. So that is prevalent in th these types of belief systems and coincides with national socialism. And many national socialists are drawn to this type of aesthetic. Now, most people that are goth, well, I don't even think goth is a thing anymore. I think it's been replaced by this emo crap with this like hardcore Mickey Mouse crap. And no, I'm not actually joking. It's hardcore Mickey Mouse crap with like... What's that game my ex's son plays? Uh, it's like Final Fantasy. Um, but, 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 but why am I asking the camera? <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts, that's it. People are like all hardcore jazzed up on Pokemon and Kingdom Hearts now. So they're like goth, like hardcore goth. Like uh, goth when I was a kid. Went from like biker type stuff. To like this sissy, I'm wearing crushed velvet, I look like I'm a Victorian, hello, to emo, which is even fruitier than goth, to I don't even know what the heck's going on. Now, all I know is Hot Topic went from a consumerist wannabe punk rock store to a consumerist wannabe Disney store. So I don't, I don't know what's going on. All I know is I've never... I've never gravitated towards that aesthetic. I've never gravitated towards the, uh, you know, the the all black clothing type of aesthetic or the men wearing makeup kind. Of, I never did that, so I don't, I don't dig that. That's not my thing. I, I do sometimes like the young ladies that dress like that, but I'm not one. I don't partake of that. It's just not my thing. But uh, yeah, I, I am a lifetime member of the Temple of the Vampire, and anybody that gravitates toward the, toward the vampiric aesthetic or gravitates toward uh, a desire to understand life force, because it does help you understand life force if you're into like Qigong and you want to take it a step further into understanding like outgoing Qigong, like um, uh, what is it called? Uh, there's prenatal energy, there's prenatal qigong, and then there's energy mobilizing qigong, and then there's uh, projecting qi. Uh, that would be, projecting qi would be done for things like healing purposes and things of that nature. Uh, this is something you will gain a deeper understanding of through vampirism, through the religion of vampirism, okay, through the temple of the vampire. Uh, however, it is pay to play, like Scientology, it's pay to play, you pay, you play, you pay, you pay for lessons and you learn things and things like that nature. Um, I never got very far in it because it just didn't interest me and I, it doesn't seem to me like there's anything really heavy duty there that I'm not going to get elsewhere. A lot of the stuff is covered in uh, Chinese medicine, especially things dealing with Qigong. A lot of it is covered in... Uh, in basic nutrition science, uh, how to eat proper, like the day side stuff is covered in basic nutrition, stuff like that. And now, now you have better access with people like Ray Kurzweil coming out as transhumanists and all sorts of people coming out as transhumanists, Maria Konovalenko, Natasha Vita Moore. Transhumanism is no longer a dirty word, although I wish they would replace it with something like posthumanism 
or uh, just replace it with biohacking or something of that nature. Get rid of the transhumanism thing because I'm tired of getting confused with transgenderism. Not that I have anything against transgenderism. I really don't. I think we've been over this. I see transgenderism as like extreme body modification. I don't, I really don't judge people as harshly as people might think I would. Um, but that's, that's my thing here is people should, uh, if they feel drawn to the vampiric aesthetic, they need to seek a uh, deep and they want to seek a deeper understanding of this check out the temple of the vampire i'll leave links in the description but what you have to remember it is pay to play okay it is pay to play now a lot of people do not have as good of a grounding in occultism and martial arts so that's the thing the temple of the vampire is unique in the sense that it seems to be grounded in satanism in left hand path tradition in classical western occultism and very, 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 very much so in traditional Chinese medicine and martial arts. So if you are not, if you don't have a grounding in those things, which I interestingly enough do, uh, if you don't have a grounding in those things, a, a basis in those things, uh, the Temple of the Vampire is a unique place to get a grounding in those things. Uh, if you already have a grounding in those things like I do, of course, you can hunt these things down on your own at more affordable prices, uh, which is what I've done. Uh, but yeah, I mean, check out the Temple of the Vampire if you feel drawn to the vampire, the vampire aesthetic or if you feel like you are somebody that might be part of the vampire family, if you will. And that's all for this video.